like running out of time to make a decision or for him to make a decision? Where, where are you guys at with uh, signing him? Or you know? Well, we had interest in him, and we expressed that to him. Uh, John, talk, John Farrell spoke with Jonathan Papelbon. I think a couple of our players spoke to him, too. But for his own personal reasons, he's just decided so far to not sign. I'm not sure if he's going to sign or not. Uh, I know he has a lot of strong feelings about Boston if he decides to sign, but it's more a situation his agent has said he's just not ready to make a decision. And also now it becomes complicated because he hadn't thrown in a game since August 6th. Mm. So you're in a position you just can't thrust him out there. I don't know what he's been doing as far as throwing is concerned. I would doubt he's been throwing a lot. So you have to go back out there and build up his arm strength and then be in a position where face some hitters. So it's not just insert him like it would have been if he would have signed right off the bat. Now, the uh, eligibility, the roster for the postseason, that's changed a little bit. But he's yeah. only got a couple of days. You have to be within the organization. You don't have to be in the big leagues before September 1. Yeah. So he's obviously, if that's the case, he's... We got a couple days, right? Before that's that right. Time. That's right. No, that's right. I'm sure that, and I'm sure that he and his representative know that. Yeah. But I think it's more his own personal situation that he's decided. It, it has nothing to do with like a club interest. It's just more whatever reason his own decisions are like that. And the rule has changed. Before you had to be an active member at the of the 25-man roster on the disabled list by August 31st. But now, as long as you're a member of the organization, you are eligible for the postseason as long as you're part of them on August 31st at midnight. You mentioned Clay Buckholz and how well he was throwing. Given how well he was throwing, um, Eduardo maybe was it 10 days in between starts, but Stephen Wright was, I believe, almost 20. Was there any discussion about maybe he should go on a rehab start first, maybe give Clay one more start to make sure that he can work those kinks out maybe in a game? Well, we had talked about it, but the reality is is that, uh, first of all, in Eduardo's case, he didn't even go on the disabled list. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a situation. And we were caught by surprise a couple times. We thought he was going to pitch, and then he just wasn't quite ready to pitch. So that wasn't a consideration. He did pitch a simulated game out here. But there's still a difference between the simulated game and, and getting into the, the regular competition. In Stephen Wright's case, um, we had talked a little bit about it, but it really took him the one inning. He felt good. I, I don't think that he was in a position that... Uh, we were anxious to send him out at that time, so he, we felt that he would come out here and perform. Unfortunately, the first inning was a little bit more amped up, but he settled in after that. You're almost kind of helpless right now, unless you do something in the next couple of days and guys clear waivers to be able to add personnel onto your roster. So what do you think wins it for you here, Dave? How do you win this division? What has to happen? We know you're playing a lot of road games, but you fared pretty well on the road. You've got teams coming up from the rear. Suddenly, Kansas City is in the picture for a wild card spot. Um, what do you have to do? Well, we have to play consistently well with all the different parts of our game. I think first and foremost, we need to score runs uh, on a consistent basis. It's there. We, we got good pitching for about that five, six-day period. We didn't score as many runs as we normally do. I think that straightens itself out. We have the best offense in the game. So that part of it, we have to get good, consistent start in pitching. And our bullpen has to step up. Now, we do get reinforcements. I think we probably have some reinforcements that are a little better than some other organizations when you get to the September. I mean, we have a guy like Joe Kelly that we think can come up here and pitch out of the bullpen and help us. Uh, we can bring Heath Hembry back here, too. So we do, we have the potential. Uh, Koji's going to throw to hitters today. We have the potential to get him back. But we're just in the reality is that we're in a spot where you have to put all parts of your game together at an important time period. We were just doing that a short while ago. A week ago, we were really in that type of role and you know, really going into Detroit. So if we can get back to doing that on a consistent basis, I think we have as good a club as anybody. Do you bring Moncado up? Uh, to be decided. We still have to sit down and have our final conversations on that. Uh, we have. Are you to leaning toward bringing him up? or uh, what, what would be your hesitancy? Well, first of all, um, if you're going to bring a guy like up like that, you want to make sure that he has a chance to play some. That doesn't do you much good if you're not if you're going to bring him up and he just sits and he doesn't play. So that doesn't do you much good. For example, when Ben Intendi came up, he played. We put him right out there in left field. So that's one thing in Mankata. The second thing is is you do have some roster situation as, and how you work with that for the 40-man roster. I wouldn't let that stop him from being brought up if he was going to play. But those are the conversations that we still need to have here over the next day. We've talked a lot of generalities. My tradition has always been with call-ups, you wait till the very last moment, and there's a couple reasons behind it. One is you see how your club shapes up as close to the deadline as you possibly can. The second thing is, is as soon as you start announcing some guys are coming up, 
than other guys at AAA are disgruntled for those next few days. So if you can put that off as far as you can, I think you're much better off from an organizational perspective. I think Lou played, uh, and, and he can relate to how those <laughs> things go at the AAA level. That guy's just, if it's not them those particular time, all of a sudden you create a little bit more problem for your manager than, than you need to. You know, one of the specifics in September is always speed on the base paths, right? And we've seen it before. Dave Roberts is obviously the classic. Quentin Berry, I thought, played that role very well. And that's where Moncada's name comes up. You see what his numbers he does. But I guess I look at it and say, man, you know, a rookie coming up in September in the eighth inning or ninth inning, and you're asking him to steal a bag off of a closer and the place is going nuts, that's a tough spot, right? I mean, it is a tough spot. You want a yeah. veteran kind of almost in that role. Sure. Uh, the, the unfortunate part is, is that clubs have gotten pretty smart on that. So there's not a lot of those guys available like they used to be at the end. So it's a situation where um, they're difficult to find those speed guys. I think for us, a lot of times, too, you, you want to get a guy that can steal a base. If you can't find that, you want to have somebody that can score from first on a double. Well, yeah. we have a lot of those type of guys, so we're in pretty good shape in that regard. But you're right, the, the pressure to put on a rookie. And even if you look at Mankata, who's going, he's going to, in my estimation, going to be a great player. And he's going to be an exciting player. He's going to steal a lot of bases at the big league level. He's still learning that art at the mm -hmm. upper levels. He hasn't stole as many bases at double A as he did at A ball. At A ball, his, his speed just took over. And you're working with him, but he hasn't stolen quite as many bases yet at uh, the double A level. And again, I do think he will do that at the big league level eventually. What about Christian Vasquez? I mean, I know Hannigan might be healthy or not, but is this a kid that. You know, no matter what comes up, or is he four catchers? Because, you know, I know he gets sent down. We still know what he is defensively. Well, Christian Vasquez is an important part for us. Um, I, I think we what we have done with Christian this year is it's been more important for him to play every day and to get that rust out from not playing. He's played well for us at AAA, continues to improve from a defensive perspective, which he's very good. Mm -hmm. He's throwing better. His hitting's coming along. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in September. But... It's also a twofold thing. You can bring some guys up for us the second because we don't play on the first. And then you have another few guys that can come up on September 6th after the AAA season. So sometimes you think you're better off letting a guy continue to play and then you bring him up afterwards. Yeah. So that uh, differs. But Christian Vasquez is important for us. Dave, good seeing you. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for lending your support here to, uh, as you know, a great cause. We well, thank you it. and thanks for you. You guys supporting this one too. It's great. Got it. Thanks, thanks Dave. Dave, thank Dave Dombrowski, president of the uh, of the Red Sox, uh, joining us here in our uh, our Jimmy Fun studio. Thanks.